Hey, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the best greatsword build that has to do with magic, bleed, and you can even use something like fire. So let's get into this. So what I love about this build is that you can actually create this early game. And all we have to do is head towards this right here, which is the minor earth tree. Once you are heading towards this general direction, you should see a carriage in the distance on the left side. What you will notice is that there's quite a few enemies around here that are powerful, so you do need to avoid them at all cost, yet it might be a little difficult. For example, this bird came on through. So what I did was just took him out easily. So let's go ahead and just take him out, and then we can go ahead and interact with the chest. I presume that if you were to approach this in a silent manner, you probably would be able to avoid that bird. Yet here we go, we have the great sword. What's great about this, about the great sword, is that basically if you use both of these, it can be a great combo. So now that we have our great sword, we can head on towards the next requirement, which is going to be talismans. If we head over towards Seath Water Lost Grace, we can then head towards the northwest. You can avoid most of these enemies by kind of going towards the left, like I've done here in this video. We can then locate the left side here, go towards the stair steps, go all the way up, take a left, and what you should see is a mini boss. It's not too difficult, but what we're going to do is avoid this fella completely, and what you want to do is just go up, locate the stairs, then locate the door, interact with it, and then go up towards the next set of stairs. What's great is that this talisman is not too far, because all we have to do is go towards the left, jump over this wall and then you should see the talisman next to the spirit here and then there you go we now have the fire scorpion charm so what i love about the fire scorpion charm amongst all the other charms is that it does increase your damage by 12 percent and we're going to be using this in this build one thing i do want to mention is that yes i did say that this build can be created early game yet you will need to progress a little bit further for certain talismans yet for the great sword you can pick that up right away the next destination we need to head towards is Fort Height West. We then want to go towards the north, and you should see that in the distance there's going to be some ruins that we can then go inside. Now, one thing to note is that there is a large, aggressive bear near. So, uh, yeah, he's not on any sort of substance, so that's good to know. It's not like that one movie. And I, I don't know if I can even mention the word, so I'm not going to even mention the first word. But it has to do with some powder, and it has to do with a bear. So, yeah, now we're at the Mistwood Ruins. We can then go down below, go towards the west. We are going to open up this door. And what you should see here is going to be a chest. Open up the chest, and now you have a new talisman. This is going to be the Axe Talisman, which increases your charged attacks. If you are curious as to how much, this is by 10%, just like the previous talisman, which was the Fire Scorpion Charm. So now we have both of these talismans, which equals 20% of extra damage. And I'm just going to annihilate this bear right here, just in case. But yeah, it's pretty much a simple process of just adding two talismans together to increase our damage. Now let's go ahead and move on towards the third talisman, which can be found over here at Altus Plateau. We want to go towards the left so that we're facing northwest, and we want to head straight towards Lux Ruins. What you're going to see again is some enemies, you know, you don't have to worry too much about them because there's nothing really too crappy about them. There's no uh, nothing that's going to really cheap shot you from the distance. So we're going to go towards the left here. Go towards the northwest again, and then we'll take a right, and then you should see that there's going to be the um, ruins right here. So, we're going to go down below. What you should see is a mist door. If you've already beat this boss, then you probably don't have to worry about a single thing, and you most likely already have the talisman. You can then just go in here, defeat the boss, because honestly, he's not that difficult, and then you can then go through this mist door. And now, what you should do is open up the door and then go through, and you should see that there's going to be this chest. Open it up, and now you have the Ritual Sword Talisman. Continuing on towards the fourth and final talisman, yet I'm going to include another one after this. But we're going to head over towards St. Bridge. We want to go towards the west, go up towards the left. You should see a text on the bottom there this is Alexander he's speaking he's gonna tell you to whack him out of this hole oh and for whatever reason I forgot to mention how much percentage you will gain in damage from that last talisman that we just picked up that will be 10% for the ritual sword talisman when your health is all the way filled up so continuing on here we're gonna knock out Alexander out of the hole 
and we can then just take him out instantly. Or you can complete his quest and receive the Shard of Alexander, which greatly boosts your skills by 15%. If you take him out now, you should be able to pick up this right here, which is the Warrior Jar Shard. This increases your damage by 10%. So there's the big difference between the two talismans. And then continuing on, if we want to add magic to our greatsword, we can pick up another talisman. And this is going to be the magic scorpion charm. This can be found over towards the three sisters. There's going to be three towers specifically, one on the right, one in the middle, and one on the left. If you have not done so already, you will need to go towards the middle tower, talk to Rani, go through the whole small little quest that she has you do, which is basically talk to the people down below. And then you just have to go back up and talk to her. Then after that, you can go towards the left here, talk to this fella, and he will then give you a potion that you need to take back towards the round table. We now have two options. We can head over towards the round table, give this potion to whoever, right? Or we can head over to the round table and give this to Gideon, because this way he will dispose of this potion. I personally think this is the best option, because this way you can complete all the other quests, without locking yourself out because if you do give the potion it does turn one of them into a puppet so that's something to take note of we now want to head back over towards the round table so let's just go over here and hand him the potion he will dispose of it and then from there you will need to head back towards the three sisters the reason why is because we want to talk to the same exact fella that we just got the potion from and we can then from there go towards his underground lab, I guess we could say. And this is found towards the right side of Rani's tower. And you should see it right here. One thing that you should see is that there's nothing there, right? But you have to hit the ground. And this will then make the illusionary floor not so illusionary. And we can then go through the south. And then what you should see on the right is a message. But if you strike the wall, this will reveal this. You will need to complete part of her quest line in order to get this part of this stuff down. But yeah, for the most part, you should see the message on the right, interact with that. And then you will need to head over here towards Altus Plateau and we need to pick up the Amber Starlight. This can be found towards the northeast and we just want to proceed up here. There's really nothing you need to worry about enemy wise, so you just kind of just have to travel here. And then we should eventually see a part where we can drop down at this is where we want to drop if you drop down straight straight downwards you may end up falling towards your death so i just kind of moved to the right and you should see that amber starlight in the middle and of course the next step is simple just hand this back over towards them and then you should be rewarded with the magic scorpion charm so now that we have that we have all the talismans we can now pick up the last item which is going to be an Ashes of War that's located over here at Fort Gale North. We are going to then locate the southwest here, go towards this general direction. You should see a castle in the distance. We're going to then go around the castle because, of course, you cannot go through the front entrance. It is completely blocked, so the only way to do this is to go around it, locate the route there, and then follow it. Go towards the left. You should see a ladder as well as one single enemy. We will then take this all the way up and just simply go downwards and defeat this beast. Once that has been done, you will receive this right here, which is going to be the Lion's Claw. This is a great Ashes of War and probably one of the best in Elder Ring currently. So now that we have everything together let's boost our weapon up add all the talismans and let's talk about it one thing to say right away is that your bread and butter is going to be that lion's claw by far essentially you can do your normal attacks which is great because you're going to receive that 10 percent damage from the fire scorpion charm because we did indeed infuse this with fire damage so make sure that you have this infused with fire and then from there you will be able to increase that damage if you want to use magic, it's absolutely great too, and I'll show you a clip later on. So let's just continue on talking about this, because when you do use your skill, this is another 10% on top of that fire damage, so that's 20% damage. And then if we talk about the Ritual Sword Talisman, if you have a complete health, that's 30% more damage on top of everything. And with that Lion Claw, you're going to add a lot more damage, and you can stun bosses. It's a great, great Ashes of War, and this is why a lot of people love this, including myself. 
And you're going to see myself right here take out this boss pretty easily, as well as I had one HP left. That's ridiculous. And I probably would have been annihilated if I would have stayed close enough to him right there, but thankfully I backed off. And then all I have to do is just go at him. So one thing to say is that if you are going to be using this against Godric, you essentially could just attack him when he's in his um, stun phase there and he's trying to chop his arm off. And then as well as this is great against the Queen of the Full Moon as well. And if you're going to be using the Magic Scorpion Charm, I believe it's the same amount of percentage that you're able to gain from that. And that's 10%. I don't believe this is affected in PvP. I know that if you use something like the uh, Claw Talisman, I believe that has been nerfed sort of it's, i think it's eight percent damage you're able to apply i could be wrong anywho you guys should definitely try this build out i will leave the stats down below in the comment section if you guys want to see it and with that being said thank you to everyone that has currently watched the previous videos i appreciate the love and support if you'd like to support the channel you can either become a member or just subscribe because it's free so if you're new subscribe turn the notifications on and that's easy to do just by clicking the bell and then making sure that you're notified for all and so yeah thank you so much guys I appreciate everyone that's currently subscribed and is a member I will see you all in the next video